it's not for a freeway or something, if a, if a location is not demanded some specific place, don't buy it if we have to negotiate above a 10% figure over the assessor's market value. And I would like to change many things in the APCD, in the hearing board, and I would like to urge the rest of the supervisors, if I become one of them, to actually develop a board of assessment and inquiry to look into the quality of property values of property owners in the county. The Board of Equalization doesn't do that now. How about some checks and balances within county government? Right now, the Board of Supervisors is executive, legislative, True. quasi-judicial. Uh, what about uh, dividing up that power a little bit and building in a little adversary relationship? Only if it were elected. That would be the only Okay, what about an elected county mayor? If, they, if the people wanted it fine and dandy, it could be put on the ballot at the next election. The people and try. Do you think that the people do want it? I don't know. What do you want? Uh, well, the way you have it now is the simplest and the fastest and probably the most economical. And maybe the most abusive in a way. Well, it might be, but also the other system, between Yorty and the council, you get a lot of delay and haggling. And the public, I think, is confused. Both sides say, well, it's the mayor's fault or the council's fault. In the case of the county board, it's the supervisor's fault, period. And they cannot shift that responsibility. And you would not like to see it shifted by naming, say, a county mayor? No, I think if the supervisors named it, he would be their tool. That would be wrong. He must be appointed. He must have the power of the people. Do you see any coalitions forming now with these new faces that apparently are going to be on the board of supervisors? I would hope so. I would. Uh, Mr. Hahn has always been a maverick to a degree. How serious he is about that role, I don't know. But he's, he's assumed it at any rate. And I think he would welcome some more votes on his side, or he would be attracted to any new would coalition. You be expected, would you be expecting, are you expecting that you will be on his side on many of these issues as a maverick? The positions that he, he has taken in past years are ones that I've approved of in many cases. How about expanding the, the, the board, back? I've uh, never approved of that. And seven uh, members, nine I've, members? I never saw that as a, as a real issue, and may I explain why? Because we have in the county of Los Angeles roughly seven million people of whom six million live in cities, and most of their civic problems, streets, fire, water, whatever, are cared for by their mayors and councils. And most people living in cities don't even know they have a supervisor or what his name might be, which leaves one million people directly controlled by the county. Divide that by five supervisors is roughly 200,000 people per man, which is just about the same relationship or ratio of city council in Los Angeles to residents. So the ratio is not all that bad. But supplying welfare, health, for the whole county. This is true. But you have, say, the district attorney's office. Here you have one man in charge, and they must handle 50, 60,000 felony filings a year. And that's more than all the business conducted by the, all five supervisors together. But there's no hue and cry for five district attorneys or seven. Bob talked a bit earlier about the isolation of supervisors, and, and he mentioned that they sit in that ivory tower there, and they never <laughs> see their constituents. Now, when you move into that uh, top level office... We'll see, uh, it, and, I, and I'm aware that little red check can come down, too. <laughs> but <laughs> if, if you should, yes. then do you, yeah. you plan to, to open up avenues of communication? Are you going to invite your constituents in? You obviously want them to know who I, their supervisor is. I found it more interesting to campaign in this race than before, because the district is large, but you get to learn it rapidly. And going out into the district, I think, is more interesting than inviting people in. And I am hopeful that many of the county decisions are made by boards and commissions. I would like to see the Regional Planning Commission, for example, go to Lancaster every second Tuesday of the month, hold their meetings there. And uh, ideally, if some supervisor's decisions also could be made out on location, it would be excellent. Baxter, you've yes. been really tough on the decisions of some judges in the past. As a reporter? Yes. What do you intend to do if you, if, if this, if these returns are in fact true, if you are, if you have been elected, what do you intend to do as a supervisor about that? Uh, my concern in the news has been with various types of crime, particularly commercial heroin peddlers. And we found it very difficult to assemble information on cases of convicted suppliers of heroin. And I've always felt that if the public knew the outcome of these big arrest cases, we see the headlines, biggest mm -hmm. heroin haul ever. And then we never learn of how the matters diminish in court. There's the plea bargaining and all this, it just evaporates. Uh, in many cases, felonies are reduced to misdemeanors, men get bail, and that's that. Uh, I would like to require the district attorney to either publicize on his own or submit to the Board of Supervisors the list weekly of the conclusions of these cases. Do you have some kind of personal uh, animosity toward judges oh, generally? No, 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 my father was a judge. In fact, an uncle was a judge. I respect them highly. 
And uh, you seem you. I have heard some judges wonder whether you seem to be picking on them. No, I think I do believe that the problems of law enforcement are in large measure attributable to the judiciary. I really believe that. I don't think the public has any idea of how many cases are resolved. Being a judge is difficult, and uh, I'm sure that if the public knew more of the problems of judges, they might have more patience with some of the problems, but not with all. And I think that we've had cases galore in the county that are shocking. The public never learns of them. Baxter, well, thank, you, uh, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, the you had, I'm sorry, Tom, another well, question? I, I, I listened so well that I thought maybe I would be allowed one or two quick. You thought you were asleep. No, no, <laughs> almost, <laughs> just from listening. We've talked here tonight about the enormous cost of campaigning. You have kind of proved that uh, by accepting small contributions, what was it, $45? The limit. limit. Uh, how do you do that? Because you apparently have made it work quite well for yourself. You stay on television 17 yes, years. Yes, Tom, right? I acknowledge that, yes. Is that it? If I had not been in broadcasting, I, I couldn't have done this at all. I'm, Secondly, I'm aware of my debt. Okay, yes. Secondly, for some reason, on nights when a man wins his first election, it becomes almost incumbent upon people like us to ask him what he plans for his next campaign. Do you aspire to an office beyond that of Los Angeles County Supervisor, like, like for example, President or, Bless or Senator or, or Bless King? Bless your dear heart, Tom. I have no idea if these numbers will hold. If they do, and if I am successful at all as a County Supervisor, I'd like to run again with that. But maybe the $45 limit is too high and should be cut down to 20. I'll let you know. Of course, okay. Suppose they Thanks. do hold up. Thank you. Yes. Any, any word for Mr. Dolan? Any word from him? For him, from <laughs> you. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I've, I've enjoyed the campaign, and uh, I, I, this has been a far more interesting and active campaign than the one I was involved in in the past before. It's only my second. Once again, thank you, Baxter. No, thank you. And there is an arrow that has not, a red check that has not yet gone up, and that's in the district attorney's race. All right. And I'm uh, here in a half hour or so, and they will make a statement one way or the other. But uh, as they have maintained most of this evening, they think the race is still undecided with 51-49% uh, showing, and they're just waiting to see what happens. How many people are there, Warren? Tom, I think the crowd has dwindled down now to about 100 people. Uh, that's from a maximum early this afternoon of about 300. I, I was doing something here. Where is the candidate? Is he still upstairs at the hotel? He hasn't gone away, has he? Bill Yossi is still here at the hotel. He's up on the, in his suite where he's been uh, since he came down and addressed the crowd about mid-evening, mid rather. Uh -huh. And uh, he's planning to come back here again, and I presume the crowd will stay around some of his faithful that he's called. Yeah, you haven't had a chance to go up to the suite and, and speak with him or, or get any inside information that we haven't heard yet, huh? No, he no. Uh, will not talk to us up there. He says that he prefers to wait <laughs> until he comes down to address his supporters here. Uh, but he has not okay. granted an interview up in his room yet. Okay. That's about it, I guess. Huh? Tom, that's about all we have down here. We do know now that the bar is closed, and I think people are going home pretty soon. Do, do, do you have any, uh, do, do you have any uh, uh, enticing dollar bills in your pocket you'd like to bring out now? Or? Got five fives. Okay. <laughs> we had a call here from uh, Steve Friedman, who's one of our uh, staff members that we refer to affectionately on the. Uh, thank you again, Warren. Affectionately as the uh, as Fatso Friedman. He tells us that at Bush headquarters tonight, 35 pounds of popcorn have been consumed. And he consumed 33. <laughs> he probably had 30 all by himself. <laughs> He's on a perennial water diet, and, uh, and wow. he, he gets a workout just running from one room to the other. We are going to... Sweep the boards, as we say at this point. We have a little man up there with a broom, and he's going to knock them all down there. Probably as we prepare to leave the air. One final look <laughs> yes. at the presidential returns in California, the national projection, and some of the congressional races in California <laughs> as well. <laughs> President Nixon has been reelected to his second term. He says this is his final campaign, and he certainly is going out big on a landslide. 61% as the NBC News national projection, second term for President Nixon. In California, we project that he will win this state, which is, as you know, about a 3-2 to two Democratic state, that he'll win his home state with 56% of the vote. In Los Angeles County, the president has been doing very well. His campaign officials had hoped, bottom line, to carry this county by 150,000 votes. 
They are going to do that and then some. As you can see, 52% of the vote has been counted. The president winning big in Los Angeles County, winning by an even larger margin in Orange County, which is one of the big Southern California counties, heavily conservative. Richard Nixon country tonight. Up in Alameda County, George McGovern will get some comfort, I suppose, however small, from the fact that he defeated Richard Nixon there. 35% of the vote counted so far. It appears that George McGovern will carry Alameda County, which is heavily Democratic, although there has been a considerable amount of attrition in his vote there throughout the evening. The congressional races, well, we have a number of them. In the 20th congressional district, which is Glendale and so on, 26% of the vote has been counted so far. The new congressman is Carlos Moorhead, who was an assemblyman. H. Allen Smith is retiring after eight terms in the House of Representatives. The 23rd Congressional District, Del Clawson, Republican incumbent, he wins, as Tom Snyder might say. What was that? In the 24th Congressional District, John Russolo, the incumbent, will be returned to Washington. He wins. We can move right along. In the 25th Congressional District, <laughs> Charles Wiggins, 44% of the vote has been counted so far. He won. Larry Goldwater is going back to Congress. Alfonso Bell is being returned as well, even though there was some speculation that might be kind of close. It wasn't at all. In the 29th Congressional District, George Danielson, the Democratic incumbent, he is still a U.S. representative. The 31st, this is one that we've been watching carefully, the incumbent, Charles Wilson, now has taken a lead with about half of the vote counted so far. He is leading Ben Valentine with three percentage points by about 1,600 votes there, as you can see. Uh, that is a heavily Democratic district. It is one that the Republicans might still win. The 32nd Congressional District, Craig Hosmer and Dennis Murray, whom we discovered later in the evening was the assistant to the president of Long Beach University, Dennis Murray, losing by an almost two to one margin. The 34th Congressional District, Dick Hanna is the Democratic incumbent. He is still the congressman. Yvonne Brathwaite Burke, Democrat and now Congresswoman from the 37th, one of the new ones. Andrew Hinshaw, Orange County Assessor, now he can tell everyone he knows he is President Nixon's representative. He has won election to Congress from the 39th Congressional District after defeating John Schmitz in the primary there last spring. So that's how it stands. Can we take one quick look at how Republicans and Democrats are doing in the battle for control of the delegation? Well, if the cameras can't look, I just did. Republicans are leading 22 to 21, one or leading at this time. That would mean, if it holds, that they will have control of the California congressional delegation. The Democrats have had it for some time now. But it appears that the Republicans might very well take control, and that would be an extra feather in President Nixon's hat this evening. Chess Marlowe has the other side of the board here this evening with races that are still going on. Just once again, let's look at the propositions, the major ones that we have posted on the board, and we now have, have called all of them, so there are none undecided as there is in that 31st Congressional District. Let's take a look at the boards now. Proposition 14, the tax shift has failed 66%, 34%. Proposition 17, the death penalty, 68% have voted in favor of reinstatement of the death penalty in California. That one passes by a whopping margin. Proposition 18, the obscenity measure, no, 67%, yes, 33%. A defeat for the John Harmon proposition. Proposition 19 on marijuana, most Californians apparently do not want marijuana decriminalized, 67%, 33%. Proposition 20, for the protection of the coastline, at least to restrict development of the coastline, 55% have said yes, and we have called that one, uh, yes, victory, 45% no. Proposition 21, the busing initiative, 63% of the people in the state of California, at least of those who have voted, and we've counted 55% of the vote, do not want children bust for racial right. purposes. So that one has passed. Proposition 22, the farm labor initiative, has failed. 57% don't want it, 43% yes. And that was a victory for Cesar Chavez and his farm workers union. And that's pretty much the way the propositions have looked to now. And, uh, we're about ready to wrap this up, aren't we?
Yes. Yes. We're not. <laughs> yeah, we're all in trouble. I've right. checked our, our staff here. And everybody but Bush and Bugliosi. <laughs> the only race that we cannot call and we cannot tell you about is Bush and Bugliosi, and that's because we don't know. Uh, here it is. Yeah. Jess just told you. 52% of the vote is in. They're about 22,000 votes apart. They are going to have to wait till morning, and you are going to have to wait till morning, and so are we. Is 6.55, it, I is, think. Is, is everybody else off the air? All right. So. <laughs> is everybody happy? Is, well, not everybody's happy. There are some people who aren't so happy. Uh, there are so many people who have been in this room all night watching all these machines, and we are going to present all their names, and we do thank them all for making our task easy, just sitting here reciting what they have gathered for us to give to you. To our reporters, John Marshall and Warren Wilson, who I think performed above and beyond the call of duty tonight. Under very trying circumstances. Yes, for answering all of our questions promptly. And to all of you for staying with us. You know everything that has happened, except for one race, and that will be on at 6.55 in the morning. Who do we have coming in here, Horowitz? I, no, it can't be Horowitz, because he was at the president's head. Possibly Gail Christian. Gail Christian will be here, is that right? At Someone six, will be here at 6.55. One of us will be here, not one of us. So. Thank you for being with us, and good morning for all the people at KNBC News Los Angeles, and here all those people are. Sure was an exciting election, wasn't it? We could have had more fun if you came over to my house and watched my canary molt. Thank you. 